Yes, um, hello, good people. My name is Vincent once again, and um, I'm here to take us through session three. And um, like I promised last time, today we are going to look at text editors. You know, for you to advance your career in Linux or share programming or share scripting, you need to know at least one text editor in Linux, okay? There are a number of text editors out there, um, but one particular text editor that we're going to focus on is the Vim text editor or VIM text editor. So VIM text editor is a very good text editor for programmers. It is very useful for editing and creating share programs okay so let's jump into it now let me i told you once you log in you need to find out which directory you're logged in into okay as uh, as of today we are logged into home roots directory which is our home directory okay so when i ask when i say ls to find out which directories and files uh, in my home directory i realize that i have bce and i once once i enter into that bce directory and i ls i find so many uh, files and one directory okay so uh, last time I think we looked at uh, so many commands, including the cut command that you can use to open a file or create a file. We looked at the echo command for displaying some text. Okay, on the terminal, on the terminal, we looked at um, uh, tail command for displaying the last uh, ten lines of the file, and also the head command for displaying the the first 10 lines by default and we also look at this and we looked at more plus other more commands okay so i hope you practiced and um you're becoming an expert in linux already if you want to learn more about a command you can use either man or you can as well use help just dash help for example if you wanted to know more about cut i would say that cut then uh, hyphen hyphen and I say help. Okay. Once you press enter, it will tell you more about that command. Okay. So how it is used, what it means. You see here it is concatenate files to standard output. This means you're displaying like text. Okay, from a file on the standard output, and these are some of the options or arguments you can use with that command. For example, last time we used n, mm, option n to display numbers of a given file. Okay, so you can use uh, help or you can use the man command. Okay, yeah, so let me clear my screen. And as of now, you know how to clear your screen. Okay, so uh, today I said we are looking at text editors and um, the most important text editor that you need to run is VIM, the visual text editor, which is um, VI improved. Okay. Okay. The, the, uh, uh, it is an improvement of VI editor. And VIM is an alias uh, of VI. So whether you use VI or use VIM, you can still do the same thing. So the improvement that was done in um, VIM is that um, it is advanced and uh, it highlights syntax. Okay, it can put for you different colors, okay, for different uh, syntaxes within your program, okay, so that you can actually differentiate between kinds of code or words in your program. Okay, so if I wanted to know more about VIM, I could use the V demand command. Okay, and if you use a man command, it will tell you that VIM is VI improved. This is what I told you that it is an improvement of VI 
text editor and it is the programmer's text editor of choice. So you guys who want to be programmers, especially programming in Linux, you really need to understand usage of VIM, okay? VIM and its commands and its mode of operation. So you can use this to read more. For example, here it says that VIM is the text editor that is upward compatible to VI. It can be used to edit all kinds of plain text. It is especially useful for editing programs. Okay, so this is really very, very, very good. There are a lot of enhancements above VIA, multi-level, undo, multi-window, and buffers, syntax highlighting. This is what I told you, that it has syntax highlighting, command line editing, file name completion, nine help. There are so many. You can read about about this on your own, okay? And it gives you more options and uh, uh, options and, uh, and some examples as well, okay? So you press Q to, now um, I will tell you more about other text editors in Linux and uh, you can read about them, okay? Uh, so we have, uh, I, I said we have, let me pass clear, we have the VI, the VIM, okay? But which is the same thing, let me say it is VI, VIM. We have the G edit, G edit text editor. This one is graphical text editor. It is very good for people coming from Windows. Okay, G edit. If G edit is not uh, found in your, in your distribution, you can install it. By the way, the way you install a command, for example, in Ubuntu, you use opt, opt get install, okay? This is how you install a command. And you just specify the command name, G, edit, for example. Okay, and it will install it for you. If you don't have rights, then you can use sudo opt get, opt get install. And you then put G, edit, and it will edit it for you. Unlike VIM, most of the editors, you have to install them. But Vim editor is uh, comes with most distributions. Most distros come with the VIM text editor. So I said we have VIM, we have G edit, we have nano, people have nano text editor. We have um, Emacs, okay? There are so many text editors. We have CAD for KDE desktops. G edit by the way is for GNOME desktop. There are two types of desktops in Linux. We have GNOME uh, uh, desktop and we have KDE desktop. So for GNOME desktops, it comes with G edit text editor. Okay, for, for KDE uh, desktop, it comes with KET or KET write, K write, K write. Okay, you can read more about some of these text editors. There are so many. Okay, we are not going to look at uh, uh, most of them. For example, I've installed gedit, and when you use man command to see what gedit means and how it can be used, it will tell you that gedit is a text editor for the GNOME desktop. This is what I was explaining, that there are two desktops, the GNOME desktop and there is KDE desktop. Okay, you need also to read more about those different desktops. Okay, the edit is the official text editor of the GNOME desktop environment. While aiming at simplicity and ease of use, the edit is a powerful general purpose text editor. Okay, it is like Word, by the way, it is like Word. It can be used to create and edit all kinds of text files, just like the V is Vim command or VIM command. Okay, uh, can press Q, <clears throat> oh, perfect. So um, let's let's now see how we can use um, VIM to read uh, what is called open a file, just like cut, the way you use the cut to see what is, for example, in VC01, okay? How do I also use VIM? to open that file, okay, BCE1. 
Okay, this is how you do it. Just use vim command and specify the file name and then, and then press enter. Okay, it will open. Okay, and it opens uh, in this window. See, so it opens here and you can edit your work. So you need to read uh, uh, modes about vim editor, different modes. For example, when you open a file in vim, um, editor, it opens in command mode. This is command mode. If you try to type, there's nothing that will be typed. So what you do, you you change from the command mode to insert mode, okay? How you do that, immediately you press I, I. You press letter I, okay? When you press I, it will change from command mode to insert mode and uh, down here it will show you uh, the word insert meaning that you're now ready to start editing your what your file or inserting text within your file and you can use um, these arrows to move your cursor along until you put it where you want it to be for example you see how i'm moving using the arrows on your keyboard <clears throat> and when you reach there you can press enter and i go down and send um welcome you can type welcome to today's today's session <clears throat> session about text editors editors in linux in linux okay uh you love vim okay vim text editor okay you see is so interesting. And then now we have looked at the command mode. Uh, when you open a file first time, it is in command mode and you cannot edit it unless you press I and you go to insert mode. Now, after the insert mode, you're supposed to go back to the command mode and then save your file and then exit. Okay. So what you do, you press escape from one mode to the other, from the insert mode, back to the command mode, you press escape. So when you press escape, okay, it will go back to command mode. And when it goes back to command mode, you're supposed to place full colon, you type full colon, okay? You can see down here, I'll put full colon, and then you use W, W for writing, to the file right in Linux, writing to the file means you're trying to save the file. So you write or you save the file and then press Q again. Okay, these are two letters. You full colon WQ means you write and or you save and then quit. Q means quit and then press enter. If you have the permission to edit the file, it will accept. Okay. And then you can, for example, I can use cut command, to open that file and see if my text uh, is there. Perfect. So I edited the file and added these two lines. And you can see we have them here. Okay. This is cool. So um, just to recap, use VIM, you specify <coughs> the file. Okay, to open that file. Okay, and when you press enter, the file will open in command mode. So when it opens in command mode, you're supposed to press I to go to insert mode. And then you move your cursor to a line you want. For example, let me create test here and send. This is um, uh, second uh, editing the file i'm just writing no sense here but it's okay okay um <clears throat> you can say you okay you guys um i hope um i hope that um things things are cool okay perfect so i press that and then when you're done editing or adding text, you're supposed to press escape on your keyboard. You press escape, it goes to command mode again, 
and then you place um, you place a full colon, you type full colon, and then W for saving. By the way, you can save and remain in the editing mode. Let me show you, you can just place W, okay? And it will accept. Once it accepts, okay, it will allow you to type more text, okay? It will allow you to type more text. By the, the mode, uh, when you press escape, you go to what we call the exec or executive mode. It's called exec mode where you do the saving, eh? the saving, the closing of the text, okay, or quitting, something like that. Eh? That is the exec mode. When you press escape, you go to exec mode, okay? So now I've gone back to editing mode but I've saved the text, okay? I can say, um, now I can press I to go back to editing mode. I can say, hey, let me, let me continue to write uh, text in my file. In my file, and I say, thank you, thank you. God bless, okay? God bless you. Full stop. And I press escape to go to exec mode. And then I press, I type full colon, as you can see down there, full colon, and I say W and Q to um, write and quit. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. So <clears throat> when I use cut command, I can view the file in my, in my terminal. Okay, okay, terminal window, you can see. So this is uh, all what I typed in the file. So VIM is really very good. You guys from coming from Windows side, you need to learn more about VIM because in Linux, that VIM is the one text editor that you're going to be using. Even when you go for interviews, for example, if you're looking for a job in Linux, they will test you on how to use VIM text editor. That question we never miss in an interview where you're looking for a job regarding Linux. Okay, they will test you how to use VIM. Learn how to use VIM command. You have learned how to use gedit command to create text, create more text. Okay, so you guys, I want you to really um, um, learn VIM. Um, text editor very well. Don't go for JEDIT. JEDIT is very good, okay, but it is not recommended. It is not a recommended text editor, okay, for guys who want to, you know, develop programs, for example, you no, know, uh, who want to uh, learn shell programming, shell scripting, Unix uh, programming, you know, you need to learn more about VIM. At the beginning, VIM will disturb you because of the command. If you're not, you know, if you don't know how to use some of those commands, you might even fail to edit or copy or delete or do what. So you need to read, understand, and write down some of those commands and practice. You become an expert, trust me. Okay, so cool. Now, um, uh, since we have uh, different files, for example, we edited BCE1. Let me see if I can open BCE2 and see if we can. I've used VIM. And once you reach here, it is in command mode. I need to, even if you, you can move your cursor down, you can move your cursor around, but you cannot edit anything mm -hmm. until you press I and it goes to insert mode and then you can start typing, okay? This is, uh, this is second. Okay, we so have to use the, this is the second file for this E2, C2, and we, and we are now editing it, editing it using, I like typing, okay, using, um, the VIM text editor, text editor. 
Cool. Okay, cool. Then I press escape to go to exec mode. And then I type full colon. You have this thing here. You, you go to, you press escape, go to the exec mode, and then press uh, type full colon. And then I can use on queue to quit. Okay. If I use Q, for example, I'm going to show you. Okay. You see what happens here down? It's saying no write since the last change. Okay, that means we added some text. Okay, but we have not saved the text. That is what it means, no write. Okay, we have not written. Okay, what we have uh, added in this file, to the file. Okay, we have not saved it. So uh, saving means write either. Yeah, we have not saved this file since the last what? And it is a warning. They want you, uh, they are advising us to use exclamation mark to override. Okay, press enter or type command to continue. So I press uh, enter to continue. Okay, now, um, for example, I can uh, say insert mode and I, okay, I add something. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll say okay to to quit without saving without saving uh, use exclamation mark use full colon and exclamation mark like this and Q. I don't know whether it is written it is either exclamation mark Q or Q is exclamation mark could be this one quit. The explanation mark. This means that you want to quit, you want to post for a quit, or you want to quit without saving. Okay, now let me press escape. I press, I type, uh, okay, escape, full colon, and then I put Q and exclamation mark, and I press enter. Perfect. Okay, so when you press enter like that and open the file, you find you didn't save. Um, the text in the file, okay? We didn't save the text in the file, okay? Third line content now. Now I want to use the edit. Okay, let me still continue using vim command. Okay, I want to add something and save it, okay? So when you reach here, you press I and then we go now. We can uh, write something. Now we can write and save. We can write or save or save contents of this of this file. Okay. Contents of this file and exit and exit. Okay. Perfect. And uh, the command you use here is, um, let me show you, the command we use, write and quit is um, full colon, W and Q. Okay, after pressing escape, to go to the exec mode. So I press escape, full colon, W, Q. Perfect. And then I quit. Okay. Now, let me clear my screen and try to open the file BCE2 and see what is there. Perfect. Our content is there. It is written to the file. Okay. Using that, it is written to the file. Okay. Perfect. You find when you open using the cut command, open BCE2, our text will be there. So, unlike VIM or Vim, text editor, the edit is very good. Very graphical, it is like Word, the way you type in a Word document or Notepad, but I don't recommend it. Okay, I don't recommend it. We are going from now onwards, we shall be using VIM. Okay, know more about VIM, just use man, command, and it will show you how to do what. Perfect. Okay, now you can press Q. 
Okay, great. So um, we have learned about VIM, the edit. You can go ahead and uh, look at Nano, look at Emacs. Okay, you can install some of these if they are not existing. Okay, you can install them. Okay, if you want to know whether a command is not there, you can use man, for example, and I say, okay, hey, right. For example, yeah, if it tells me no manual entry for this, then you know that command is not there. And uh, for some of us using Ubuntu, you can use opt-get to install, to install a command. Okay, opt-get install key, right, for example. And when you have internet, it will go ahead and install. This one is saying, do you mean command opt-get? Ah, it is opt, not opt. Yeah, perfect. Okay, is up to get. Is up, up to get like this. Perfect. And it is telling me permission denied because I'm not logged in as root. So what I do is use sudo and uh, say up, up to get install. Okay, right. I don't want to install it, but I want to show you. And we put. You put your password and it will start installing by the way. You see, this is how it installs. For me, I will not continue here. I will say no. I don't want to install this. And if you're a bot, so for you, you say yes if you want to install a certain command. Perfect. So I clear my screen. And um <clears throat> you guys let us stop here for today's session. And um I encourage you to go ahead and read more about uh, Linux text editors and uh, put more emphasis or attention to VIM, the Vim text editor, to the text editor that we shall be using. Okay, thank you so much. Um, God bless you.